on the financial side, it is important for you, well I think it's important for you to know how much money you're bringing in each month um, and, and have an appreciation of where that goes within the practice. It's a good feeling when you look at how much you've earned each month and your boss gives you, you know, well done, you know, you get a good pat on your back from the boss, you've done a good job and your clients have paid and it's actually money in the bank. Yeah, it, it has a massive implication on everybody, um, the general feeling around the practice. Um, at the end of the day, if everyone's bringing in money and people are paying, and that's less stress on your boss and your support staff, everyone just feels a little bit happier. Uh, we've got a constant list that's about three pages long of clients that are in debt that haven't paid. What that basically means is that they have to have, um, they get, and that will be different for every practice, but our practice puts late payment fees onto um, clients' accounts if appropriate. Um, if they're not paid and it means a lot of chasing up. I know our practice manager is always on the phone chasing up clients. So many places you go and you pay on the day. Most small animal work to my knowledge is you pay on the day. It's uh, quite a luxury to have an account and, um, and a lot of people have a lot of money on account. Um, it does, it's a big deal, even in the small practice I worked in in England, I used to spend a um, couple of evenings every month before and after the account run just going over the bad debtors list and, um, and trying to get people to pay. But then you get, as the vet, lists of clients that you can't go to. If you take an FPOS machine and get at least some, of, some if not all, of the payment at the time, you just um, don't have to have someone in the office chasing up the details. So I would say non-regular clients, um, it's very important and get payment up front. And again, for all the reasons we've talked about, that decreases the amount of effort everyone else has to put into chasing up your work as a vet because you've, you've done it. So yeah, it's very doable and everyone can work in a FOSS machine. And, um, we always have a consent form filled out before an, an, uh, before an owner is allowed to bring their animal in. And part of that is that it talks about how much they're going to spend and that they're able to pay it at the time of pickup. We don't offer accounts. Um, all the time we have people asking for accounts and, and the vet will come to me and say, can this client have an account? And the way I think about it or the way I was told to think about it is, would you pay the bill for the client and then be happy to take the money back off of the client? And so as a new graduate, if you can look your client in the eye and go, that's all right, I'll pay this bill for you and you slowly pay it back to me, then you're allowed to give them an account. Bad debtors are a headache. So someone comes in, they promise you that if you save their dog, they will, they will pay for it. And so you take it on, on their promise and you work your guts out and you fix their dog. And then they take their dog home. And they don't come back in for the first revisit. You think, oh, that's all right, maybe they got really busy. And then they don't come back in for stitches out. And then they don't start paying off any of their bill. And slowly, you're gonna get a sense of dread that they're never gonna come in and, and take care of that bill. For an associate or a new graduate, the first thing that happens then is guilt because normally you're the one who's okayed an account for them. So you're the one who's put the practice in the whole $1,500. As an owner, what I see, and, and, and I see it not going directly into the bank accounts that the staff salary comes out from, and so I see the line between money being in there to pay for taxes and things like that and money being there to pay staff salaries lower and lower. And that's really heart-wrenching. I think that's the thing, it's an emotional hit when someone doesn't pay their account having promised that they would. And it, it keeps happening. It's never the ones you expect. They can rock up in their beamer with their dog dying. You work a miracle and, and send it home well and, and happy. And they're the ones that won't pay, even though you were sure they would. Well, it affects the value of what you've done for that dog, but it also affects the value of what you're doing for everybody else's dogs, because it means that they're either gonna get lower levels of service because you can't afford an endoscope, or they're gonna have to be charged more accurately, or you have to increase your prices next year because you've had $20,000 worth of bad debtors this year. And so everybody suffers, except for the bum who doesn't pay.